In November of 2016, California voters passed Proposition 64, the Adult Use of Marijuana Act. San Franciscans overwhelmingly approved Prop 64 by nearly 75 percent, and the law went into effect in January of 2018. Under California's new law, adults age 21 and over can legally possess up to one ounce of cannabis and grow up to six plants at home. Adults in California can legally give up to one ounce to other adults. In the state of California, we've passed a law to say that adult consumption is legal. Well, if you're an adult and you're now in possession of certain amounts, you will no longer be tried, you will no longer be arrested or, or, or prosecuted for, for that. So I think that that is changing the landscape dramatically. The legalization of cannabis could bring tremendous economic and social benefits to cities like San Francisco. This industry is projected to reach $22 billion by the year 2020, and that's just a few years away. It can be a huge legal industry in California. I think very shortly, the actual growing of marijuana may become the biggest cash crop in the state. And so you want that to be a legal tax-paying cash crop all the way down the line to sales tax on the retail level. The California medical industry was a $3 billion industry last year. Anticipating that multiplier of 20, 30, 50 times in the consumer marketplace once adult use is really in place, uh, you could go ahead and, and apply that multiplier to revenue. Uh, it's going to be huge. When that underground economy becomes part of the regular tax-paying employment economy of the Bay Area, it, it not only has a direct impact, that money has a ripple impact through the economy as well. And it's not just about retail, it's not just about dispensaries, it's about manufacturing. There's a lot of innovative manufacturing that's happening here in San Francisco, in addition to other parts of the state, as well as the cultivation, and we should be encouraging that. There is a vast array of jobs that are going to be available in the newly regulated cannabis industry. You know, you can start at the top tier stuff, which is like scientists working at testing labs, scientists working at extraction companies. Then, you know, you look towards more agricultural jobs. So you have, you know, those are gonna require less education. And then you look towards cannabis retail and you see traditional retail jobs and you see you know, general management jobs, those kind of things that are very similar to you know, working at a bar or restaurant or working you know, at a retail store. We are offering essentially high paid manufacturing jobs. Typical starting wage of 18 to $20 an hour, almost no barrier to entry. You do not need an education. So that means that people who do not have college education, working class people, will have an opportunity to have a job cultivating cannabis plants. And there's a whole wide array of job opportunities from the seedling to the sale of the cannabis. Last year, SF Travel said 26 million people came to San Francisco. The tourism industry also continues to be very robust here in the city and county of San Francisco. It's about a $7 billion industry. If we use a conservative cannabis user adoption rate of 15%, that means about 4 million tourists will want to purchase cannabis. And we need to be ready for them. In 2015, as adult use legalization efforts gained momentum in California, the supervisors created the San Francisco Cannabis State Legalization Task Force. This task force offered research and advice to the supervisors, the mayor, and other city departments. We knew that adult use legalization was coming to the ballot uh, and that that would bring with it a number of uh, decisions that the city would have to make about zoning and regulation and so forth. Uh, and I decided at the time, and, and, and others agreed, uh, that rather than have a fire drill after the ballot measure passed, which I suspected it would, that we should plan in advance. And so I. <clears throat> um, authored legislation to create a task force to spend a year studying it, and we made it a broad-based task force. 
we prepared ourselves by developing a health impact assessment. And part of that was having key stakeholder discussions with Washington, Oregon, Colorado to really let, learn lessons from uh, their experience rolling out uh, both adult and medicinal cannabis. Within days of the passage of Proposition 64, the late Mayor Ed Lee called on agencies to act decisively. Mayor Lee issued an executive order asking the Department of Public Health, along with planning and other city departments, to think through an internal working group around what we needed to do to consider writing this law. We collectively, so I would say that was representatives from uh, GSA, as well as the mayor's office, uh, met with a lot of departments to talk through what Prop 64 and the implementation of Prop 64 meant to them. The mayor proposed an office of cannabis, a one-stop shop for permits allowing operators to grow and sell cannabis. Yeah, Mayor Lee wanted a smart structure. He wanted a regulatory structure that ensured that, you know, kids didn't have access, that communities were safe. Um, and that consumers were safe. And he wanted to ensure, more importantly, that it was a regulatory structure that encouraged uh, diversity and inclusivity. And this is an office that is going to be solely charged with the duty of running the, not only the policies that we create, implementing and enforcing them, but also executing the licenses that are needed. We're talking about probably around 20 different licenses that would put us in compliance with what's happening on the state level. This is a highly, highly regulated industry now at this point. And we have anywhere from seven to 10 departments that will be working with these industry participants as they go through the permitting process. That's a lot of work, that's a lot of coordination. We're creating a permitting process that is smart, that is digital, that is much easier for the user and for community input and is less sort of mired in bureaucracy. For the first time ever in San Francisco history, standalone licenses are available for all aspects of the non-retail side of the cannabis industry. So now a cultivator can go in to the Department of Building Inspection and to the Department of Health and say, with this first registered and then temporary license and then what will eventually be a permanent license, this is the project, this is what I'm going to do. Very rarely in city government do we interact with industries that are asking to be regulated. And these guys want to be regulated. They want to be compliant. They want to work with the city. And that's rare. So San Francisco, it has created a temporary licensing process so that pre-existing operators here in San Francisco can apply for a temporary state license. We've taken teams of up to 12 inspectors to inspect their facility twice a day. We've been doing that um, with the Department of Building Inspection, the Department of Public Health, um, and the Fire Department. And I think it's really important for the industry to know that we're treating them like industry, like manufacturing, uh, like uh, growers, so that that's the way we're approaching this from a health and safety and a consumer protection, that this is just the way practice happens with restaurants or manufacturing facilities. Because there are so many pieces of the industry that people haven't even thought about. There's different permits. For each piece. So you have to set up a permitting system for growing, for manufacturing, for testing, for delivery, for retail. Um, you have to make sure that, that there's appropriate health codes. Certainly the regulation of alcohol um, in terms of restaurants and retail um, is probably a model for how this industry will be regulated as well, both on sale and consumption. It's completely uncharted territory, and there's a blessing and a curse with that. I mean, it's exciting because we are on a new frontier, but it's very nerve-wracking <laughs> because there's a lot at stake. And quite frankly, being San Francisco, being the state of California, people are looking to us. We really hope that cannabis does become just more of an accepted part of society in the same way that alcohol is, uh, in the same way that coffee is. This is a very innovative sphere, particularly around manufacturing. I want to let that flourish. I think that's an area where San Francisco could be an epicenter. I think San Francisco can truly be a leader here, a global leader in the cannabis movement, and set a bar to show other communities 
and cities and states and this nation how it's done.